And we're back with Survivor Hot Takes. As always, it is me, Coach Drew, joined as always by Emily. And today we are joined by John Buckley from the online org community host of CTC. We'll explain what CTC is uh, later in the episode. John, welcome to the show. Hi, uh, thanks for having me. We're happy to have you. Thank yeah. you so much for coming. As a newbie, we, we have two questions, as always. Uh, well, first, all-time Survivor Hot Take. All time. Oh my God. That's so hard. Um, Natalie Bolton is the best one time player of Survivor. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> that's my. Okay. Wait, wait can, can we talk about that a little bit? Why? why oh, we sure way? can. <laughs> Natalie Bolton is my Let's favorite Survivor topic. <laughs> she's, so <laughs> <weird>. <laughs> she, <laughs> she's like, she's so radar in the beginning. And she literally basically looked at her tribe, said, You guys are crazy, and I'm going to step back. Yeah. And let them go crazy. And then she got herself an alliance without doing anything. And then took the power that she was given and just started chopping off heads. I love it. I and love like, it. if it if she wasn't, <laughs> if that if this alliance has made her initial tribe and not on the tribe swap, I do believe <laughs> that I, I I whoever he is. <laughs> 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 if she, if Alliance was created on her original tribe. I think Natalie could have potentially won that season. I love Natalie. I thought that she was genius. And we, we talked about her a lot whenever actually we, we Josh was the Asia with Josh. <laughs> yeah. And Josh dragged her, and I was offended he by didn't that. Drag Josh, her. Yeah, he did. Josh, he didn't you dragged her. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, and then 42 hot or 41, 42 hot takes. We'll do we'll put those together for now. Oh god, 41 and 42. Oh. See, I mm, 41 was not a good season. I think it might be a hot take for me. Um, but 42, I think Tori has the best shot of winning right now. Oh, God. In this and current that's, moment, she yeah. probably does. That's and that crazy. is, like, such a big hot take because, I mean, especially for, for um, the people who listen and they, they are on – uh tin not whoa not tinder twitter um i always mess those two up um and like whenever they're on twitter like everyone that i see absolutely hates tori so i think that's super super interesting literally like people are yeah. so against tori but i'm like if you look at how she deciphers people mm -hmm. like she has a better read i think on her tribe yeah. than her entire tribe does interesting. so like, can yeah. i ask you like a follow-up question with that too yeah like do you feel because she got a lot of heat um in the first episode for changing her role from being a therapist to being a caretaker so what are your thoughts on that i think it was smart mm -hmm. i would not, as someone as someone who has a therapist um therapists are very analytical they are very like they their whole job is to understand people and the game of Survivor boils down to understanding people. If right. you, if you came, eat a buff, <laughs> eat a buff, yeah, buy buy one that's ugly. You're gonna eat it. Um, <laughs> like, if I was told, like, if someone came to me and be like, "Yeah, I, I'm a therapist," I'm like, "Cool, put your torch right there." Jeff's gonna snuff it now. Like, right. I don't, I don't want to Especially... play somebody that's gonna psychoanalyze right. me. And Denise, like that, that's actually was one of the big skills that got Denise to the end and gave her the million in her season, you know. So I think that's. Mm -hmm. a, I also I totally agree with you on that. Yeah, like, just I would looking at Zane's tattoos is like, oh man, that means he's been through some shit. Blah 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 blah. Oh, let's vote Zane out. Well, he's asking to be voted out, so it helped. But right. Uh, so speaking of Tori, I guess we can go right into the episode. Um, John, initial reactions based off of what happened in the premiere. What did you, who did you think was in the best spot going into episode two? Based off of going into episode two, um, are you talking overall or just? Overall, yeah, we'll go overall, but if you want to focus on the tribe that has to go to tribal, we can work with that too. I would say overall, I would say somebody like Jenny or Lydia, mm. who is kind of like, under the radar on the winning tribe that you know and maybe that's because i just saw erica completely devastate what i thought a winner could do early game right. um so maybe my brain's like if this is the new era survivor this is how people are gonna have to win yeah so i guess my brain's looking at them being like they're probably gonna be people to look at 
Well, I agree with you. And the the big reason why I agree with that is because they've already shown little wins, you know, so Lydia being the winner Mm -hmm. um, in the challenge. And then also Jenny um, being able to get all the triangles and being like and using her design skills. I those are actually the two people on my fantasy league that I don't have any votes on them at all because I think that they've already proven themselves, but also not overly proved themselves. Does that make sense? Exactly. That's exactly where my brain was going. See, with that. you and me, John, we're like we're. You yeah, get it's me. A, it's, it's the Pennsylvania thing. It's the Pennsylvania. It is. It is. It. <laughs> we all suffer together. <laughs> it's true. And so and I will say that I, I'll just start it off with saying that I did. I've enjoyed both episodes so far. I, I've really enjoyed. The, I think it's already off to a better start than season forty-one was. And like oh, yeah. I've. I didn't hate 41, and I actually thought that the first few episodes of 41 were fairly decent, but I think this this has definitely blown it out of the water already. I have memorized everyone on the cast, which it took me a bit to do for 41. Mm-hmm. Um, like, as far as their stories, I feel like the ones that we've learned so far, and I feel like we are getting more as you know as the pre-merge continues, uh, I feel like all of the stories are relatable. Uh, I think that there is a person on this cast that everyone at home that watches can can latch on to. Uh, Emily, I know that you're a big Mike Turner guy, but uh, is there anyone in particular that you actually see more of yourself in, you know, as of now? I just, like, if I, well, seeing more of myself in versus who I feel like is going to make it to the end may not always be the same thing, you know, but um, on both sides, I, I, I know that, John, you already mentioned Lydia. Like, I'm obsessed with Lydia, and I've already mentioned that a few times. I, the reason why I really like her is because I think that, like, she has, again, like, been able to manage and walk that line of um, being um, a really good winner, um, but also being a very humble winner. And that's something that, you know, especially whenever you're coming in at the very start and you're already winning all these flashy games, it's a really hard thing to do whenever you've been on a consistently winning tribe. Um, so she's not overly confident. I see a lot of myself in her, but I think that she's also just because of her energy in itself. It's not like uh, I, I really like her, um, but I hope that she makes it really, really far. Um, I'm, I'm looking at my list right now, and I think that like she, she's someone who I really think is going to be great. And then someone who I feel like could be very polarizing, um, especially after this episode, is Daniel. I know that we're going to talk about that probably a little bit later, you know, just with his presence. But I think that like either he's making too many big moves too quickly right now, um, or he's putting himself in a really, really great spot that's going to carry him to the merge. And I can't really figure out which, to be honest. Yeah, I think that – so I, I actually really like – I really like Daniel. I really like Daniel, and I want him to. I don't want him to win. He's not my winner pick by any means, but I want him to do well. I'm hoping that he doesn't. He doesn't get too flashy too early. I hope that this Mike Turner thing is like the only thing that like he puts down on his resume. Yeah. Um. I I hope that. Are you using the word resume? Hold up. Pause. Are you? Yeah. I, I should have done it. I should have done it, you know, in quotations because I hate that. Uh, but I hope that's like the only pre merge thing that he does as to not be looked at as a threat. Yeah. And so, I think on that tribe, I I feel like there are other targets on that tribe right now that Daniel could be safe for one or two rounds if they go to more yeah. than one tribal council. Can, can I ask something, too, now, now that we're kind of on that subject of Mike Turner? Um, I think that everyone who listens knows that. Um, so I do a Survivor Fantasy League every year, um, and I'm obsessed. Like, I, I Well, I, I chose Mike Turner at the start because for a lot of reasons. I thought that he was a pretty calm. You know, I watched his videos. seemed like a very calming presence, pretty well thought out. I mean, first responders tend to do very well in new school Survivor because of how quickly they can adapt and react and those sorts of things. So I thought that he was a pretty safe bet for Soul Survivor. Um, but I'm really scared and I've been sweating since, uh, last week, since, uh, he's just, he just let the cat out of the bag to literally half of his whole freaking tribe. And y'all, I'm, do we think that this is going to be the beginning of his downfall or do we think that it's just going to be like a lovable, oh, Mike thing and somehow will make his way out of it? John? I, oh, I don't I know. know. I, I mean, this honestly routes back to my just feeling on the beware advantage in general. Um, it, I just, I think it, it just, it's hard to bank your game on somebody, two people on two different tribes and two different like islands 
finding a little piece of paper this big Mm -hmm. and just hoping to God that they find it. Mm -hmm. And that can completely fuck up your game. So, like, it... I feel bad for Mike. Um, However, I think he played it really wrong. (laughs) I I know if I was him, I... And maybe it's even, too, like, I feel like everybody's telling everybody things. Like, there were people on other tribes, I think it was... uh, What's his name? Swat, Swati? Swati, My thing. yeah. Like, Swati. She just, like, told Tori, like, oh, I want to get rid of Drea. Because Drea yeah. had a, a, and, a cause, cause vote. Yeah. Because Drea told the girls about her extra vote. Like, Literally. Like, like no one can keep their mouth shut. Everybody's like, telling everybody everything. And, like, yeah. it's going to it's gonna, it's gonna become a cataclysm of people just, like, coming after each other for least. Yeah. Which I didn't think would be a thing this early. Yeah. But it is. And it's... And- it's right spicy and my my hope kind of with this is i mean like i'm scared for mike right now but like even if we think about where we were in episode one versus episode two how many extra advantages were given how many extra votes were given like um who's now after who i mean this game is so fast-paced that maybe like mike's beware advantage won't be the big target by episode three um maybe it'll be something that completely falls under the radar and he finds a way to utilize it to his best advantage i have no idea I think the best thing going for Mike at this point is the fact that, um, oh my God, I forgot his name. I'm picturing him. I can um, see him. Daniel. 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 Daniel's arm, I'm sure, probably is still injured in some capacity. Mm. And he's running around, like, spreading information and over-strategizing. And I know if I was on Survivor and I screwed up my arm, the last thing I would do would try to paint a further target on my back just because, That's like, it was nothing point. against him. But, like, if it's a small tribe and you, you know how Survivor challenges are, like, and there's nowhere to out, hide. There's yeah. nowhere to hide. If this was, like, a 10 person tribe, I'm sure he'd be fine. Right. But, like, it's six people that if it goes mm-hmm. to five and it goes to four, he yeah. has one arm. Now, has Daniel proven himself at challenges yet? Oh, I, I really no, don't know. He, he he fought through it in the first challenge where he actually where he actually messed up his shoulder. His whole arm oh. was just hanging there like a limp and spaghetti. He, yeah. Can you believe? And then he it? sat out this episode. Okay. And I know okay. even the immunity challenge last week, like I didn't notice it per se, but I forget who I was, I was talking to somebody. It might actually it might have been my boyfriend. Um who doesn't really watch Survivor that much, but the fact that he caught on this is crazy. Um that Shame even through him. the even through the challenge, oh, he's fully on the trail. We're watching Australian yeah. Survivor fully into it. Um, but even in that challenge, it's like he was like dead fishing his arm. Yeah. So like it might still be, it might still not be yeah. at a hundred percent. Maybe he's trying to reserve it. I don't know what, but it doesn't look good. Um, I, I don't think, yeah, and I think that that's one of those things where it will require more medical attention later down the mm-hmm. line, but it's something that, like, will not, is not life-threatening with the amount of time that they're there right now, but if it has any other sort of major impact, which is very likely, you know, considering they're only, like, what, probably, like, three or four days in right now, um, then it could really impact his trajectory in the game. Well, I mean, you could pull a Tyson and just, like do the challenges that you're really good at and Dude. then just kind of milk it the rest of the time and not overly scheme. And that's why he's scaring me because it, I'm hoping that this episode was just an anomaly. Like this, this is it. We'll, we'll, we won't get any more Daniel content until like right before the merge, hopefully, because if it keeps on going, I feel like he would have a better chance of going than Mike does. Like, I feel like in that situation, Mike might actually stay. Now, from that tribe, I still feel like Roxway is probably the first person to go. No, no, that's wrong tribe. Wrong tribe. Wrong yeah, tribe. Yeah, I was like, I have a no, question. No, nope, well, that's not true. That's not true. Uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, I do have um, a question about that. So, like, I mean, like, they're, like that whole tribe. My tribe. Hi. Hi. Yeah. I want to get to him in a second, but yes, keep going. Well, I guess like because my my question is so like that that tribe has already gone off into pairs basically because they've yeah. been like just very successful at being able to function. So it's basically Chanel and Daniel. That was really proven whenever Danielle told Chanel about Mike's advantage, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then Mike and Jenny, I feel like have been pretty close. And then like Hi and uh, Lydia are like besties, to my understanding. Um, and so I guess like my 
my um what do you I, call I, I wonder, the goat <laughs> we're protecting goat. her at all costs i don't care what happens to anyone else like i don't even care what happens to my fantasy league we're protecting her to the end um <laughs> So, like, let's say that, like, um, Chanel and Daniel and, um, like, Lydia and Hi were at, like, a, um, a you know, a uh, face-off, you know, and it's between, like, and, and Mike is the one person, you know, like, do you think that Jenny would side more with Lydia and Daniel or with Hi and, wait, wait, I lied, I'm um, with Chanel and Daniel or with uh, Hi and Lydia? Who would Jenny show more allegiance to? I feel like... I feel like Mike. I think it would be Mike. Yeah, but I mean, like, do we mean? Do you think that she would show more allegiance towards like the like oh, if there were two yeah, groups, oh. like? Yeah. So let's say that Mike's out of the equation. Let me rephrase that. So let's say that Mike's out of the equation. Okay. So now it's Daniel and Chanel, and then Hi and Lydia, and then it's just Jenny. Who would Jenny show more allegiance to? I think Chanel. You think? Because I think like there was, was it? There was like I just feel like. I know Hi and Lydia, their relationship was, I don't know if I saw this on like Twitter or I saw it on them in like that first episode or whatever, but they have a very like their personality mm -hmm. kind of like bond, which is mm -hmm. hard to bring a third person in to. And I feel like Daniel and Chanel's is very like game related. So mm -hmm. like, I think Jenny would be more cohesive with those two than she would with Hi and Lydia, which I, I think it would be that's what would probably would happen. But again, it's Survivor. God, God knows what could actually. Yeah, happen. I have no idea what the next couple episodes are going to look like. I'm scared. <laughs> that's exciting, though. That's exciting. Yeah. Like yes. that's a, that's a mark of a good start of a season. Is it is. You really don't know what could happen. And, and honestly, like that, that's the best. That's what I love the most about this season as opposed to 41, which I mean, like nothing against 41. I think they did the best with what they had and they just threw whatever they could and let it stick. But I think that like, like we mentioned this before, like I have no idea who's going to go home just based on the voting patterns from the last few episodes. I have no idea what the next thing's going to look like and how these new advantages are going to, are going to impact that. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Well, I'm excited. So I did want to quickly again, I know we touched on it a little bit last week, uh, the ambulance. Um, it's crazy that the the three people that have the ambulance that have the ambulance, only one of them we've really heard people like kind of go after Drea. Uh, as of now, um, John, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on the ambulance twist this season? And what do you think the likelihood of all three making the merge are? Okay, first I do like the twist in the sheer fact that it's different mm -hmm. it's not as like in in the way that i don't like the beware advantage i do like the amulet twist if that makes any sense no that makes perfect sense um so I, what i'm trying to still try to figure out is if do they need all three of the amulets together to play whatever the first advantage is or is each of the amulets like if all three are in play they're all three of them are like if, if they're all active um and they have not been voted out yet then they get the least of the most uh, least of the powerful advantages so that but like this won't be the extra yeah, but, but yeah. like so if if um drea i completely like her name if drea went to go use her amulet now would it be an extra vote or would she need the other two amulets to form one extra vote? I think that it only like goes to effect I, during the merge, yeah. right? I feel like they need all three in order to do... I feel like the way I've read into it, I feel like you need all three to use an extra vote, but I don't think you need all three... So, like, if, Dre, if they all merge together and yeah. Drea decides she needs an extra vote and high and... Who else? Lindsay. Lindsay, Lindsay both have yeah. Hi and Lindsay both have their amulets. She doesn't have to go to them and say, "Hey, I'm getting this extra vote." But because they're all active, she can just do it and vote out one of the two. You know, at that, that feel like that's what how it works, right? I guess we're gonna find yeah. out because I mean, honest, like I didn't even know that they couldn't say like that if that if like for example with the beware advantage that Mike wasn't required to say um, the the saying that he had you know for to in order to activate it immediately you know I think that like this amulet advantage is gonna come with a lot of different loopholes and it's just a matter of who can see through them. 
yeah like that's what my whole thing is like if it's it's going to be i'm more excited just to see what it's going to bring yeah yeah are you gonna see these people going like like the spider-man like me of them all like this like who's gonna <laughs> shoot first like are they gonna work together like are they gonna like i know they all shook but that was like day one on the beach yeah, it was day one a lot mm-hmm. of shit happens between then and there so like I just I'm excited because I think this actually might be a really good advantage yeah. and I've been missing that kind of yeah. thing in Survivor for years now. Uh-huh. Can so. um on on the same topic of the advantages, I, I I wanted to ask this last week just because it was the start of the season, but I feel like this is a good transition. Um, so we talked about how much we love the the um, amulet advantage, um, and so I'm taking it. We all hope that it comes back. Um, based Lots on people. all of the other advantages that we've seen like thrown at us, we can combine 41 and 42 at this point. Which ones do we think have a chance of making it to 43, 44, and so on? If the amulet work, that yeah. Period. The, the amulet for sure. I was not sure about the shot, but mm-hmm. now that two people have taken it, it might actually be like I'm living for it. It might be a thing. It might be a thing. Yeah. Um, so I'd say that one has the potential, but it all depends on what happens this season with it, to be honest. Yeah, definitely. Because honestly, like I was even thinking like as a viewer, like when Mariah was being, uh, you know, whenever they, they got to that that tribal and Mariah was going to use it and she, like they didn't give us any like pretext to it. So I stood up because I'm like, oh, like, I could not like I was shocked. And that's exactly what they're looking for with survivors, that shock value, you know. So I'm hoping that comes back because I'm living for it. Yeah, I, oh, and so the the one twist that I know that they want to bring back that will not work if they brought it back past 42 is, you know, activate, or the, the beware advantage of yeah. activating it by saying stupid shit at, at a challenge. And the reason that won't work is very obvious, because people will have watched 41 and 42. If anyone goes into a challenge and says stupid shit, uh, everyone's going to quickly jump on, Absolutely. oh, this person has an idol. Which could work to someone's advantage if they go in saying stupid stuff, knowing full well people are going to think that something's going on, and maybe you can use it to your advantage, but that's, you know, down the line. Um, so the episode continues. Like I said, this is not really a recap. This is more of just touching on uh, little things. Uh, I know that Lydia is now, like, a goddess on Twitter. She was on, she was getting up to goddesshood uh, before the She's season started. She's and she's doing it now. Uh, the the challenge has been officially turned into a meme. What she said during the challenge has officially been turned into a meme. Um, but her tribe wins again. Uh, do I think that that they um, they'll go totally unscathed uh, much longer? Mm. I hope not. Um, but we'll see. And my fear is. If they do go to tribal, they're going to vote out my winner pick, which is Chanel. Uh, so can we you not? You think so? Can we not do? No, no, I don't actually. I don't think that they actually will. I just my that's yeah. my feeling that something I, will I'm happen just, and Chanel will go. Yeah, I think that they're building up to that though. Like, I think they're building up to some sort of big conflict that's going to be happening in Vati pretty soon, especially with all with you know Mike's uh, Mike's advantage that he found and like they, them giving so much screen time to. Um, to Daniel finding it and trying to, you know, to operate systems and get them ready. So I'm very excited to kind of see how that evolves this episode. I hope Mike goes rogue. Mike goes rogue and just activates yeah, it. please let him go rogue. I just, like, <laughs> I'm like, please, God. <laughs> I'm so scared. John, I don't think I asked you, uh, who, what character, or what character, what person on the show ha- have you seen a lot of yourself in up to this point? Oh, or is it still too early for you? Um, I am the... God, probably without all like the high strongness, I relate to Marianne mm. because I'm one of those like I just say what's ever on my mind kind of person. And like the part, and I didn't quite like feel completely like connected until I saw like her visible nerves at Tribal. And mm. I was like, yeah. that's me. Like that is me. Like I am somebody that just like my leg shakes when I get nervous yeah. about something. And I feel like a lot of times people are always like, stop shaking your leg and whatever. And I'm like, okay, I can't help it. And they're always like, you can help it. I'm like, I can't help it. So like seeing somebody on national TV in that kind of situation, 
with their yeah. legs shaking. I'm like, thank God somebody else does it. Like it's that it's, vulnerability. Yeah. It is. Like it's not like I like seeing that vulnerability. And like yeah. and I look at I, and I like I was even like watching like when they used to panned out on like the five of them. And like you look at Omer sitting beside her, just like completely like 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 yeah. nothing's happening. And it's yeah. like how like it's interesting to see how these people are just kind of like they hold things in, but she's just open with right. how she feels. And I like commend that a lot about her. And I think it's kind of inspiring in a way. Definitely. So, so do we think like now that we're talking a little bit more about Marianne, um, we're we're in a position now where they're where they are the smallest tribe. So in Taku, now we have Jonathan, Lindsay, um, Omar, and Marianne. And th these are only our four people. And mm -hmm. typically a lot, and I, I mentioned this before, like whenever you kind of get on a streak or when a tribe gets on a streak of losing, especially multiple people in multiple episodes, it'll kind of continue to dissipate, right? Now, do we think that this is going to be a situation where uh, Marianne will be the next target? I hope not. I hope yeah. not. I, I, America's so sweetheart. She literally... <laughs> When she had like the reverse Billy Garcia moment, yes, at the, at the, well, the episode title is called a love story. Uh, this episode is titled a love story. I, my God, it was the most beautiful moment of I think I've ever seen in Survivor because we don't see Survivor romance that much anymore. Like we see little pieces here and there, people flirting back and forth, but for a woman to profess her love like that, like on TV, like go ahead, slay. I've also never, I've never laid to a statement more than that's the kind of white guy I would go for. I thought it was the funniest thing. I was like, she, I know she, I know she didn't just say that. Like, I know she didn't just openly say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, John, you're into Jeff Probst are you, are you that up, though. What? Are you also into nerdy white guys? pre we Pre-boyfriend. We've been here for a year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we love the nerdy white guys. Uh, I, wish, I wish I did, but I don't. Shout out to Zach. <laughs> shout out to Zach. Shout the out. greatest first boot since probably like Francesca Aww, or Zane. Francesca. Or Reem. I know people aren't. I, the big I think people. Reem. I think Reem is up, Reem's up there. You, you. Yeah. I don't remember this person. Who is this man? Reem? 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 From Edge of Reem? Extinction? It's a woman. It's dude. The first woman first person voted out of Edge of Extinction. You don't remember Reem? When she That's walks, what... she walks out and says, I hope it rains on these people. And then she goes to a freaking desolate island and lives there for another 37 days. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, never mind. Okay, I remember her now. I remember. She she was an older lady, wasn't she? Yes. Okay, I remember her a little bit. Honestly, Edge of Extinction, it's just not a vibe for me. So I, it just slipped my mind. I try to block it from my memory, you know? Edge of Extinction was so good. And <sighs> for all the wrong reasons. For all the wrong reasons. <laughs> it's the next level Gabon. It's true. Yes, it is. I hate it. Oh, <laughs> I hated it so much. Um, so as we start to wrap up, um, any thoughts on our boot? I We, we didn't talk about her at all. But, <laughs> right. Well, um, I, I loved her story. I loved her story, was, yes. Yeah, and she had great vulnerability. Um, but I do want to humbly brag just for a minute. Um, uh -oh. So I, I have my notepad here. I always take notes before we have sessions, usually. Um, and so, but like whenever we, I was putting together my fantasy league, I had like a whole like numerical scale. I was so proud of myself trying to rank on who I thought would make it just based on like camp life and challenges, strategy and social were my like four big pillars. And um, as of right now, I'm two for two with the person with the lowest score and the person with the second lowest score um, being voted out. So I'm doing a little humble brag until it all goes oh, Okay, so right now, who's your who's your person at the top? Uh, I don't want to talk about that. Okay. It, was, it was Jackson, um, but um, oh, that, that, that was not related. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, no. but, but, not but, that. Oh, not but, three for three, just two for two. As of, as of right now, okay, so Mike is up there. I have um, Lindsay up there. Um, wow. Jackson, Dude. which, you know, and then um, Chanel is also up there too. So those are, my, those are my top three. So we'll um, see. So... John, any thoughts on Mariah? Was she just kind of, or? She, I really liked her story this episode. Um, I loved that kind of, just the highlighting of that story. Um, I think it's something that was good to be out there. Um, 
and I did like her a lot. I didn't expect her to go this episode. I'll be completely yeah, honest. Like mm-hmm. from the edit she was getting, I was thinking it was more of a build up than of a kind of a. Um, yeah. And especially when she played the the shot, I was like, oh, I guess so. She is probably gonna go um, as soon as mm-hmm. she stood up. Um, but I, I mean, she seemed lovely. I would have liked to have seen more from her. But in, and uh, as someone that lives in New York uh, and was like very much in the shit when everything started popping off a couple years ago, like um, I was sitting there watching the episode and like, I started tearing up cause I'm like, yep, this is, uh, you know, especially hearing that he was the first um, to, you know, to pass, you know, in the medical field from that. Um, I just kind of sit there like, yep, yeah, it's all coming back. It's all coming back. Uh, it's like, what are the chances? You know what I mean? Like, like the, ver- the, the sibling of like the first healthcare worker um, yeah. passing because of COVID, like it blows my mind. This got really dark. So, um, <laughs> but yes, We're but you in the episode. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, but Mariah goes, we have our second shot in the dark. Um, and I'm, so I like the twist. I know all of us have said we like the twist. I would hope that it doesn't come up again for a few episodes. I hope that it kind of, you know, and then like yeah. it happens again in like a bigger moment. Uh, but I also understand that these people don't know this twist, and so they're going to take advantage of it. Abs- uh, you know, absolutely. But um, I just don't want it to become played out. I yeah, I agree with That's you. My I think it become played out. Yeah, someone mentioned. I I like to listen to a lot of different Survivor podcasts before we do ours, just to get like a lot of different well-rounded opinions. You know, and someone mentioned I forget which one, and I wish I can credit them, but it's probably on Rob has a podcast. Um, but they they said like uh, I think it was Stephen who was like, well, like um, like it would be really cool if like after every shot in the dark, it went it like your your odds increase. So every time someone used it, now it would be one in five. The next one would be one in four to kind of help to increase those odds for that dramatic effect. And then once someone used it, it goes back to the one in six. And I think that would be really engaging because it kind of heightens the chance and it per- pushes people to use it, but not too much. Yeah. You know? um, okay, you're giving me ideas here. <laughs> ooh, ooh. <laughs> Before we bounce, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, say, I, I wanted to give uh, John Buckley some time to uh, advertise for his org and to explain what orgs are to people that might not know. Um, yes, all right. I guess I'll, I'll start with the, the, the debrief. Um, orgs are um, online reality games. So um, anything, the majority of them are Survivor and Big Brother based. Um, emphasis on the Survivor end. I host the Survivor one and I'll get into that here in a second. Um, but they're usually run through like Skype or Discord. Some run through Facebook Messenger, um, and it's like simulating an online version of Survivor. It's playing it's all the strategy of Survivor while you have a bag of chips and a soda, and you don't have to actually starve. Um, and it's a fun time. Like I like I'll go and I'll work my eight hours at work, and I'll come home and I'll get online and try to strategize the blindside people it's a weird it's a weird life but it's really fun <laughs> for no yeah, really that sounds really fun it's and it like different. preps people for if anyone who ever wants to be on the show you know it gives them a little bit more experience before they boot you off to the island you know yeah it's it's crazy um so my series is called coast to coast um lovingly known as ctc um we are about to start our seventh season um this Oh God, April 8th is when we're starting it. Um, We're a Skype-based org. Um, We do all of our challenges and tribals on Zoom because I bought a Zoom Pro account and I'm going to use it. Um, But uh, it's just a really fun time. This season, we're bringing 20 people on. Um, The theme is of an island off of the coast of like, I think it's like, I don't remember where it's at. It's called Socotra. I had never heard of it. One of our hosts found it. It's like the coolest little island. So like we do, some orgs will do like full out themes. They'll do themes to like, I played one that was Harry Potter themed. I've actually not including the one we were in, Andrew. I played another one that's Harry Potter themed too. Um, and I've played like there's been Hunger Games themed one. There's a Pokemon themed one I'm watching right now. The tribes are Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. So shout out to whoever's org that is because I don't remember the name of it, but I've seen it. Um, but we do location based seasons unless it's something like we did a fans versus favorites that had like a time theme because it would like turn back time and like bring back stuff. I love um, that. But um, so we're doing Socotra 
um, is our next season. And um, we have a Facebook page. So if you want to join the Facebook page and watch everything, um, it's, it's a fun time. It's fun. I'll post the Facebook group uh, in the YouTube description. So when this goes live, we can, you know. Um, yes, everyone, please apply to any and all, not any and all orgs. There are some not any and all. Apply yes. to mine. <laughs> uh, not, not Buckley's. Buckley's is fine. Uh, but please, if, you were, if you've ever thought about, you know, what you would do in certain situations, please at least apply to these games. Uh, they're a lot of fun. You get to meet a lot of really cool and interesting people and like every now and then like a jerk but most of the time most of the time uh you, you know i've met john uh from a game that i just recently finished playing uh, a few other people that we've had on the show in the past i've met from uh the online gaming community so uh please look out for it uh apply and hopefully you have more fun than you do like getting pissed off and angry at people which that <laughs> Uh, but thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for uh, listening to us on Spotify and, and all those other thingies. Um, we will be back Thursday. We will be back Thursday. Last Thursday, we couldn't because of something. But we will be back Thursday right after the episode on Wednesday. And hopefully Chanel is still here. Hopefully Mike Turner is still here. And John, who's your winner pick? Uh, it's controversial, but at this point, Tori is my winner pick. Good luck with that, John. And <laughs> last season it was Tiffany, so I'm not saying that's not good. She was mine too. It was so good. I loved her. We were right. They were wrong. We will see y'all on the other side. <laughs>